Reading to women. I'm Andy, and I'm George, and welcome back to the Windmill Full of Corpses. So, you know, when the Mandalorian says, this is the way? This is the way. That is not the way. This is the way. It matters us. It does. It does, it does, it burns us. There's fire on the way. It's like the floor is lava, but the floor is like a root, a path, a way of the fire. Right, so, disclaimer, because we didn't uh, do, we didn't say anything useful in the previous reaction, because that's not our jam. This is our jam. Um, we haven't listened to any of the promos that Yari released ahead of this album, we haven't heard any of the snippets, we've stayed away from all those videos, so everything you're seeing here is first time. The Way of the Fire is the only song we've heard before, like four years ago, because there was a live version, and we've heard Storm live. And by live, I don't mean the live version of the song, I mean he played it live. And we were there, we were there. So we heard that once too. So we're pretty clueless about this, this is, this is no smoke show, it's a fire show. On the way. I agree. No. Bro. Oh, 
Bro! I mean, bro! Bro! I've waited so long. And one day it will reward you for the burden of weight! It did. It really did. This one alone. It's worth it. Uh-huh. Yeah. If you put one of these songs every 10 years, that's worth it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't give him ideas, no, bro. I said nothing. Forget I said it. Come to think of it, it's less than 10 songs and it took more than 10 years, so he's already slower than that. Okay, so... It... What the fuck? <laughs> no, I like... I wanna talk! It started... When it started, it was very much constant blasting. Well, you first had like the clean, pl clean, plucky bit. Yeah, <laughs> plucky, plinky, plinky bit. Yes, like yeah. dreamy plucking is what that was. And yeah. then it starts blasting. And I think like one, two minutes, you have like the constant drill, right? Yeah, and he did something really sick. Mm. We, so when you got the blast beat, it's, it feels like there's this constant surge of energy, right? Yes. And then he made it feel like it, it's landing into a groove, but he didn't change the blast. It was just the riff. Yes. The riff went from, from more of an, like, drilling sort of thing to one of those, like, really high attack that riffs, like you have on Battle Against Time. Yes. And he was doing that under the blast beat. So it still felt like it's running that constant surge, but it also felt like it planted and like I wanted to bang my head. Yeah. I and then the screams and everything kicked. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't quite remember all the variations in that part. What I really liked about that one is, the orchestra hits. Yeah. And the way he says fire. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody is allowed to say fire anymore after Yari has said it. Because nobody will be able to say fire in a way that it feels like you're sitting in one. <laughs> you know how I said that dude's running as if he's Mario Galaxy when he, as if he's Super Mario when he jumped in lava? No, you feel like you're Super Mario Galaxy when he jumped in lava when you listen to the damn song. Bro, it was so hard not to just jump off my ass because <laughs> that shit burns, okay? And I, I did not eat anything spicy. I promise it's not anything on its way out. It's just the music that did that. Seriously, dude be shoving chili peppers up every orifice with his guitar riffs. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? Okay. Bro! <laughs> okay, we had once... I don't know if we can call those solos because I think he was layering guitars. So I think if you do that live, you're going to have like dueling, but it's not really like dueling because it's not like now it's this one, now it's this one. It's more like what was happening in Death and the Healing where you've got like one guitar shredding and the other one's doing some bending and then the other one switches to shreds and this one does some bending. So you feel like they're overlapped you feel like there's one of them that's coming to the forefront and the other one more in the back, but there's two of them. Okay, I can't back what you're saying because I wasn't focused enough on the layering in the solo and I was just focusing on like where the lead is going because I was trying to process the solo so that then I would have things to say about it. Which you don't. Of course I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Yari has made it his mission because if you want people to be able to discuss your solo, you play like a solo, right? Yeah. <laughs> but what he played was like, Four of them intertwined. Elaborate. I, I, I can't elaborate. That's the point. <laughs> it felt like you're listening to four solos at the same time. His playing is so nimble, right? Yeah. And that, that lead, the, the main lead feel, it, it just comes to the forefront so clearly so much that I, I like, I like just lost the background. Okay. Screw the background. I, I didn't feel like it was dueling all the time and I didn't feel necessarily like the other guitar was in the background, but it, it's like you've got one melodic line going, and that's the solo. And it's, I think it's switching from one guitar to another. Mm -hmm. And, and, cause you have like these, like a, a note is drawn out for a while, and, and yet the other leak starts playing on top of it. Yeah. So you can't do that without overlapping guitars. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why I felt like it feels like a duel, but at the same time, it feels like you have one melodic line. Mm -hmm. And I think when, when the switch happens, you still have guitars on the background. And now I don't feel like, the entire solo time was like that. But I'm listening to the solo and throughout it I'm just getting like, oh wait, there's another guitar there here. Mm -hmm. And there's another guitar there here. And that's just his obsession to stack as many instruments as possible on top of each other. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it was two solos. And yeah. I remember this from when I saw the live thing from 70,000 Tons of Metal that it's two solos. Yeah. Second solo was longer and more impressive than I remembered it. And I have the perfect metaphor for that solo. Picture this. 16, 1700s China. I don't know the history, but you know, you get the aesthetic. 
you know, people with carnivals and dragons and uh, cool looking vases and shit. Yeah. And cool looking outfits <laughs> and kung fu. <laughs> Now imagine there's a festivity to that shit and your mom didn't allow you to join, but you're a very inventive kid and you decide to try aviation, but you're not gonna try it by airplanes. What you're gonna do is invent fireworks. And you're gonna make a very big one, and you're gonna ride that shit. <laughs> and that's what happens through the solo. Like that solo is like riding a firework, and then that shit crash lands in Chinatown. And that's when he says, "Fire!" No, I mean right, right after the solo, you get another one of those Chinesey sounding things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like the man landing on the party, but the ride kind of outdone the party already. Huh. Bro, there's so many facets to this one. There's things I missed. I'm sure there's things I missed. There's always things you missed. Drum variations all over the place. And I feel like you, I feel like drum, drum variations and transition and stuff come forward more than they did when I heard time one. Yeah. Right? I think, I think the drums are a lot, a, a lot better mixed. Like in, in the original mix, you could hear the, the machine gun sort of going, but it was hard to pick up the details on the pedals and stuff like this mm -hmm. and on the cymbals. But what, What was going on here when we were going like this? Mm -hmm. That's a fucking lie. Mm -hmm. Because you had this, mm -hmm. the snare was, the snare was constant, but the cymbal was just mixing it up everywhere. And I, I think, I think, he, I think he was doing something like keeping it constant and then switching and giving it more, some more spaced out on a, on a more resounding cymbal and then going back to the tight one and keeping it kind of like a blast and ke kept alternating those things. I didn't spot that in that much detail. But it does make sense because Kai Hafta does strike me like the kind of guy who's like, bro, you mean I have to hold the beat? Okay, I'll give you one limb. One limb will hold the beat. Okay, that's the snare. The rest, I'm doing whatever the fuck I want. Well, it was three limbs holding the beat because the other two were also just, you know. I feel, didn't, didn't he have, a, have like variations in the kicks too? He had, but not, not on the very constant part. Yeah, fair enough. <sighs> I'm, uh, everything we say is stupid. Yes. We're gonna move on. Uh, one, um, One final thing. Mm. And I put the word final there for a reason. The ending. Mm. Mm. You get like this grand finale and final chord and stuff. And then you think it's going to sit there and just sort of going to fade out. And then you just get volume up on guitar and stop the riff. <laughs> that was so well done. That was kind of cool. Yeah, that was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. That really went down in a blaze of glory at the end. Yeah, because you know how you got this, like when there's a, when there's a big note at the end and then you just cut it. Yeah. It felt like it did that, but before cutting it, it went, you right, know, you read up and stop. You know, overall how this song makes you feel, oh. you know, the live recordings from Sonic Pump Studios from time one. Yeah. You know, at the end, when there's at the end of Sons of Winter and Stars, mm -hmm. when the guys finish playing and uh, Kai Hakuto is doing those things. And then yeah. you have this one shot of Yuka going like this. Yeah. That's how this makes you feel. That, 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 you just, you just snapshot that and play that and just play Yuka doing that for 11 minutes on end. That's how this song felt. <sighs> how the fuck are we gonna make it through another four of this stuff? We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna need coffee. Yeah, me too. Are we done here? No. So if you enjoyed this reaction, we'd greatly appreciate the likes and shares. And if you like some more, don't forget to subscribe with bells on. Thank you very much for stopping by. We hope you enjoyed your way and we'd love to see you back at the windmill very soon. <laughs> Corpse is out.